I'm Dave with Ladika Photography and today I'm going to give you guys a wide angle roundup on the Sony A6000. Uh, a normal wide angle roundup on 35 millimeter would be 28. Uh, 24, 28, 35. Uh, so we're going to go right in the middle at 28. So that's going to be our peak measurement for the day. Uh, the first lens that we have is the Sony Pancake 20 millimeter f2.8. This actually is exactly the same as 28 millimeter on 35 millimeter. Uh, the reason why it's labeled 20 is because the distance from the sensor to the element on this camera is 20 millimeters. It has nothing, nothing to do with actually how wide it is. Uh, but this is going to be kind of our go-to. So this is your first option for 28 millimeter. Your next option is going to be this setup right here. Uh, this is the standard Fotka um, hollow adapter and uh, this just allows you to mount a Nikon AI camera to this lens. So this lens is 20 millimeters with this adapter and it on this camera is equivalent to 28. So that's uh, this is a pretty old lens but it's kind of my go-to lens. I've had it for a long time. Very sharp, very reliable. And then the next setup that we're going to do, and I'll show you guys with this lens here, is the 28mm Nikon AI f2.8 mounted on the Cam Diox focal reducer. And the focal reducers uh, have a couple of interesting features. Um, one thing that I noticed after doing some research is it seems like the element in these focal reducers are all coming from one company, uh, a German company, but they're all coming in different housings. So I chose this particular uh, housing because this is the most common that you're going to find. Um, they do vary as far as how they look and the actual focal magnification, but I think that has a lot to do with how they're mounted uh, actually in the housing, like if the housing is just slightly farther away from the sensor, if it's slightly closer, uh, that's what would change that. So we're going to use uh, this lens on here, but I wanted to show you one feature about the uh, focal reducer before we get started. And uh, if you have a lens at 2.8, as I'm showing you right here, um, this is going to stay open no matter where you turn this ring on the focal reducer at 2.8. If you go down to f8, then you can choke this down to f8 really quick and then open it back up and then turn the ring again. It just only goes to f8. If you go to f22, it'll go all the way down to f22 and then back open again. Uh, this is really good for manual focusing. Uh, that way you can open the lens up you can see everything and then you can choke it back down to the f-stop that you want. Uh, kind of a nice feature to have. But in any case, we're going to use this focal reducer with this lens. So let's get started. Alright, really quick, inside Method Art Gallery in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, I'm going to use uh, one of these lights to show you the issue with the focal reducer um, mounted on the Sony a6000. Now this happens on all the cameras, but basically if you look at the light that's in the center of the screen, notice the lens flare. Now it's pretty bad, this is wide open, so let me go ahead and stop this down and brighten our video up again. Alright, so right now we are at f11, and notice how big that lens flare got. Uh, so this is the issue that you might have heard about with these focal reducers, the big blue-purple mess in the middle. So anyway, uh, I just want to touch base on that really quick. Alright, so here's our indoor test. And uh, this is the uh, Sony 20mm f2.8 mounted on the A6000. And as you can see, it's uh, 1 20th of a second f2.8 with an even EV value at, at ISO 100. And over here, we have the focal reducer uh, at f2.8 at 1 20th of a second, and the EV here is one third of a stop brighter. Now, moving around in the room, I notice that it's actually more like two thirds of a stop brighter, but right here it's one third. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take some pictures for you, and then you guys can compare those. 
And so there's that one and that one. And now let's check out the uh, uh, Nikon uh, 20 millimeter AI with the standard adapter against the uh, focal reducer. Okay, so on this camera body, we've got the Nikon AI 20 millimeter f2.8 with the standard adapter. Over here, this has got the 28 millimeter with the focal reducer. Again, this one's a third of a stop writer. Uh, this particular one looks almost identical to the Sony. Uh, it's also just as warm as the Sony was. So I'm going to go ahead and take a picture. That way, you guys can compare those. All right, there we go. All right, so here's my ultra high tech way of measuring the depth of field. So we put a ruler out in front of the lens, and then we're going to measure out to about mm, probably 10 inches out on the ruler uh, with it all the way open. And then we're going to take a picture from there. We're going to do this with both lenses. Uh, so let's see what that looks like. All right, so now we've got both of our cameras focused in at exactly the same distance using the ruler. Uh, so they're focused exactly nine and a half inches out from the very front of the lens. Uh, so if you look at the actual backgrounds, uh, this side is the 20 millimeter f2.8 on a standard adapter. And look at the background of Bob Price's um, studio area. You know, you can kind of make the paintings out. On this side, is the uh, focal reducer on the 28 millimeter and it does actually look like the backgrounds blurrier uh, so therefore looking at it, it does have a shallower depth of field uh, it's not the most high-tech test but it does actually work so anyway I'll do the same thing with the Sony millimeter f2.8 and we'll take pictures uh, with both of these just so that way you can actually look for yourself and we'll also do the Sony so that will be online as well. There you go. Okay, so now we've moved outside. And on this camera, we've got the Sony 20mm f2.8. And on this camera over here, we've got the 28mm AI uh, with a focal reducer. And if you notice, this is actually, they're at the same settings. And this one's uh, two-thirds of a stop brighter. So this is f2.8. And I'm going to go ahead and post photos from all three configurations uh, at f2.8, f8, and f16. Alright, so I've picked up the camera that has a focal reducer on it and I'm shooting the video right now at the same settings I actually took the pictures at. You see the Lamborghini pulling up in the background. Alright, so anyway. Sorry for the road noise. So right now this is at f8 at 500th of a second. Uh, what I wanted to show you guys was if I open this up to f2.8 all the way open and crank the shutter speed down to where we shot it at at 3200 uh, you'll notice that it's now the picture is now warmer and there's a very smooth vignette going to the outside almost like a gradient neutral density filter in kind of a way um, like a center spot filter um, so it's much darker on the outside edges than it is in the center and you can kind of see this as I move it around if that kind of tells you anything alright now I'm shooting video uh, on the A6000 with the Nikon AI 20mm and the regular adapter now, right now, we're currently wide open, and you notice that this one does not have the hot center, uh, nor the, the dramatic vignetting going to the outside, and it's also a lot sharper. Uh, but what it isn't, isn't quite as bright. We're at 3200th of a second when we're doing the other one, so we can literally open this up to 2000th of a second, and this is the same brightness as uh, the... Uh, focal um, reducer. Alright, so now we're going to crank this down to f8 and then open the shutter speed up to I'll bring it to 400th of a second because uh, that was the equivalent of well, there we go, 320th of a second. That's the equivalent of what the focal reducer was at at 500th of a second according to the EV exposure. 
Uh, so you notice that this is really sharp in the corners and uh, no issues at all. All right, now we've got the uh, the Sony uh, 20 millimeter f 2.8 shooting video. I'm going to brighten this up just a hair as well at two thousandth of a second, so it's equivalent to the uh, focal reducer. And you'll notice that this one's also very clean. Um, really, no issues in the corners. Uh, right now we're at f 2.8, and we're focused on the uh, trees in the far back. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this down to f8 and then I'm going to brighten it up to 320th of a second and there you go so this one doesn't really have any issues uh, with vignetting either um, nor does it is it nearly as warm as the uh, focal reducer alright so let's go back inside Alright, so here's what we've learned. Uh, the 20 millimeter pancake is actually 28 millimeters. Um, overall, a very decent lens. Um, I would say definitely much better than the kit lens. And you really can't beat it for, I think I paid 130 bucks for this off of eBay. Alright, so that being said, uh, great lens for the camera. Okay, so the 20 millimeter AI mounted on a hollow adapter is the equivalent of this lens. Uh, overall it did very well. Slightly cooler than this lens. Um, decently sharp. Wide open there was a little bit of ghosting but nothing that can't be uh, fixed in Photoshop very quickly. Um, there was some flaring on the left side. Uh, some minor chromatic aberrations in the corners uh, all the way wide open. Not a big deal. Okay so now the the big elephant in the room. Um, the focal reducer. Uh, overall, uh, it took a 28 millimeter and made it the equivalent of actually, I take that back, it took a 28 millimeter, made the equivalent of a 28 millimeter on an APS-C size as it should. Otherwise, the APS-C size on this adapter would have been 40 millimeter. Um, it did do that. It is uh, two thirds of a stop brighter overall. Um, and it does have a shallower depth of field. Now this isn't magic how they did this shallower, you know, this uh, shorter depth of field. Uh, basically what it is, is on an APS-C size sensor camera, uh, this f2.8, even though it's allowing the same amount of light as f2.8, because the sensor size is smaller, the depth of field is actually deeper. So this on 35 millimeter, like if you were to compare the two side by side, would be the equivalent of this lens at f4 on a D800. It, that's the same depth of field. So basically, all this is doing is making this lens f2.8 on an APS-C size. That's a lot to say. When in reality, it's not going to be any better than this. Um, the issue with this one, though, was that it was very soft on the left side at f2.8 and at f8 but it fell together just fine at f16. Uh, indoors, because we're in a tighter area, I think it did a little bit better. But like I said before, overall it's very warm. Um, so to landscape photographers, I don't get one of these. It's just not going to work. But it might be great for portraits and uh, people. So I'm not going to toss it out of my bag just yet. Um, I'm going to test it on a 55 millimeter uh, f2.8, a 50 millimeter f1.4, and an 85 millimeter f1.8 and see how well that does in some portrait situations. Um, but overall it is actually kind of cool uh, simply because it gives you extra options. So what I mean by extra options is if you have just these two lenses and these two adapters, this on this adapter becomes 40 millimeter. This on this adapter actually becomes a true 20 millimeter on your camera. So you do have, you know, you've doubled your focal distance uh, with both of these. Um, you know, from basically going from uh, almost not quite, somewhere between wide and ultra wide to a normal focal length. Um,
But anyway, I guess that's it. The support files are going to be on levikaphotography.com. The link should be in the description. And uh, outside of that, I hope you guys like my videos, and I'll talk to you later.